I dare you. One of the most powerful phrases in the English language. It's not a question. It's not even a, it's not a demand. It's a challenge. And it's usually uncomfortable, at least in my personal experience, and not just because there might be people watching, or maybe your personal dignity is at stake. <laughs> it's uncomfortable because it's a push. So about three years ago, I was dared to do something. But I'll set the scene. I was living in Washington, D.C. with my husband, and I was working in communications for a nonprofit that helps women and girls facing gender-based violence. Now, I'm a writer and filmmaker by trade, but I had recently switched gears to advocacy to deal with issues I really care about. This organization I worked for addresses everything from human trafficking to domestic violence to forced marriage and child marriage in the United States. Okay, so we know that forced marriages and child marriages are a problem. When we think of them, we tend to imagine places like Southeast Asia or the Middle East, right? Well, before I worked for this organization, I didn't realize that forced and child marriage is happening here in the United States because the women and girls it's happening to are from all different communities, from every socioeconomic, cultural, ethnic, religious, and non-religious background you can think of. I mean, it's happening in big cities, in suburbs, in small towns. It's happening in the house across the street, hiding in plain sight. And, surprise, it's legal. That's right, child marriage is still legal in 48 states. New Jersey and Delaware are the only two states to have banned marriage under age 18 and only just in 2018. I mean, I used to think of myself as a relatively well-informed person. How did I miss this? Honestly, now that I've come to recognize it for what it is, it makes me wonder what else I'm not seeing that's right in front of me. What else we are not seeing. So anyway, I'm at my job one day and I get an email, a media request. A production company wants to film a young girl being forced into marriage right up to her wedding day because, and I quote, it would make for compelling reality TV. A traumatizing human rights abuse with lifelong consequences such as rape, domestic violence, mental and physical health issues would make for good entertainment. And it occurred to me, these people don't even realize what they're asking. And that wasn't even the only email like that we got. So cut to that night, I'm venting to my husband about it. <laughs> and I said something along the lines of, hell, I could make a documentary showing people why it's wrong. He simply said, why don't you? What I heard was, I dare you. A challenge. And so, I did. And my world cracked open. As a filmmaker, framing is everything. I mean, you choose every single detail to manipulate perspective to tell a certain story. But how do you tell a story that isn't yours to tell? This was a new one for me. Instead of inventing worlds, I was diving into someone else's. Well, the answer I found was to listen to survivors of forced marriage. I mean, really listen. They revealed a world of manipulation and abuse happening all around us and protected by our own laws and magical thinking about the institution of marriage. I heard about grown men marrying children as a way out of statutory rape charges learning that the age at which that man can marry that child drops even lower in many states if the girl is pregnant. I heard about families forcing their daughters, underage or not, to marry a man of the parents choosing or face terrible consequences. I heard about rape on wedding nights and on many nights after. I heard about the violence they experienced at the hands of their husbands and the pain and isolation that came when they begged to get out, asked for help, and were told by their families or communities, 
You chose him. This is on you. Make it work. I heard the anguish in their voices when after escaping their own personal hell, rebuilding from nothing, and now advocating to change the laws to protect vulnerable children, they were told closing the loopholes would be really unfair to the 16-year-old girls who feel genuine affection for 50-year-old men. And, well, a lot of 16-year-olds are really mature. And, if she's old enough to have sex, she's old enough to get married. These are actual excuses from legislators for why they chose not to end a world-recognized human rights abuse in their state. So, picture a girl. She's 16. She should be thinking about what she wants to be when she grows up. A vet, maybe a programmer. But a grown man has taken advantage of her, abused her, and now she's pregnant. Her family thinks, well, she'll be better off if she's married. The baby will have two parents. The father won't go to jail for rape. And now she's 17. While the friends she once had are sending out their college applications, she is stuck at home with the baby. She has no high school degree, no job, no prospects. The welts on her arms from yesterday when she didn't fold the laundry right are still raw. Oh, and she gets her braces off next month. In the eyes of the law, she's still a child, so she can't go to most domestic violence shelters. She'd be considered a runaway. She can't apply for a divorce until she's 18 because contracts with minors are legally voidable with the exception of, you guessed it, marriage. Uh, have you ever heard the term shotgun wedding? Yeah? How about cradle robber? Now, I want you to think about the context in which you heard those phrases. Was it in an article? Uh, maybe at a party? Or in a tweet? Now, I want you to replace shotgun wedding with forced marriage. Replace cradle robber with pedophile. Feels different, huh? Words have power. Images have power. It's easy to be complacent with parts of our culture. It is hard to dig into the complicated truths they come from. It's confrontational. It's painful. It's also necessary. Because that's where it starts. To change something, you first have to be able to see it, have to be able to call it by its name. What you do beyond that, that's up to you. Making this documentary opened my eyes to the truth about forced and child marriage in the United States, that it hides in plain sight, that we have trouble understanding it, and an even harder time simply calling it what it is. Marriage is not a magical fix-all. It does not transform children into responsible adults with fully formed brains and the ability to protect themselves. And it does not transform abusers into loving partners. When a form of violence becomes a punchline to a joke, we're all complicit in validating it. One of the survivors in the film told me that she used to think the only way out of this horrible life she was stuck in would be to die young. Fortunately, she didn't die. She escaped, and she now runs an organization helping other individuals facing these terrible situations. But all of this, all of it, is just one issue. The one I happen to train my lens on, but one of many things we find it difficult to see or even to name. When things get messy, our instincts say, look the other way. It's hard to push against those boundaries, to break them open, to look beyond at what is right in front of us. And it's going to hurt, like cleaning out a wound that never properly healed. But the clarity and compassion you find on the other side is always worth it. So look, I don't know what that thing is for you. 
I don't know what the next push is for me either. But what I do know is that if it's not uncomfortable, you haven't found it yet. So this is my challenge to you, to all of us. Keep pushing. I dare you. Thank you.